here episode 10 of house of the dragon the season finale welcome to the show boys podcast i'm pixel nick join me as always chadwick the third chad how are you doing this evening doing great man how are you nick how are you i think i'm doing better I had some technical difficulties yeah <laughs> am i still good am I still yeah good? you're still good you're still okay. good so far okay good i'm glad i'm here glad <laughs> i don't sound like optimus prime yeah um, Blowing down some one. lines of coke before you yeah. get on here. <laughs> a, a busted Optimus Prime. <laughs> Silly computers. Um, but yeah, this um, it's been a, it's been a fun journey. Um, excited we made it this far. Um, what a good show! What a yeah. good show for beginning to end. Um, yeah. You know, as some of the articles like stated that I saw the headlines, like one was like, you know, they pulled it off, right? They they managed to make a a complete non pile of burning trash of a, yeah. of a sequel prequel um of yeah. game of thrones so congratulations to them yeah i would agree with you man this uh to be honest even though it sounded like i was super excited and i was super excited for the show i had the absolute lowest expectations possible so sure you know i was yeah. not expecting to I think everyone get, did yeah and I'm, i was not expecting to get anything good let alone what we got which i think is great so super, super exciting. I do maybe as a whole think that this season needed just a just a dash more action and for, <laughs> for my yeah. liking. But right. that being said, I think when we look back, when we get done with season four or whatever, and we look back, it's going to be important that we spent this season with these characters. I think you got to you got to get that. And if you if you look at Game of Thrones season one, not a lot of action. So. Right. So when comparing it to that, I think we got maybe even a little bit more in this one than we did in, in the original because of the dragons, basically. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Every dragon sequence is an action sequence. It's just not, right. quote unquote, fighting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we get some of the most violent. Um, actually, we just get the most violent moment a dragon <laughs> so far, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I that, would that for sure. And then the the miscarriage scene was freaking brutal as oh, well yeah. to watch. Like I, I was pretty shocked at the way they handled that, but yeah, yeah. They, they've definitely uh, doubled or tripled down on the whole birthing violence battlefield yeah. concept yeah. Uh, that we kind of talked about really early on in the show and how that's kind of like their war ground. Um, right. They definitely like to parallel that a lot. And yeah, the birthing scene was very intense in this mm-hmm. one uh, for sure, because we see basically the full cycle from early term miscarriage to her wrapping, mummifying the baby and to, you know, to be burned. So yeah. that was just like a whole lot um, more than I think anyone expected to get. And yeah. they, uh, they gave it to you. That was, yeah. that was your blood for the, for, for, the, sure. for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Outside the end, the outside the end, that was uh, some big, big splatter in the air. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of really cool parallels back to earlier episodes in this episode mm-hmm. specifically. And Second I think the ones they just don't got a good yeah, luck in this show, yeah. man. The, yeah, they're rough around the edges, yeah. I I I really like the way that this season ended. And I we kind of guessed last week that this was going to be how this episode was going to be. We were going to focus mostly on the Targaryens, right? And I'm kind of I when I said it last week, I was like, I'll be kind of salty if they do that, because this is the finale and I would like to see like, you know, stuff moving in a direction. 
but I feel like stuff is certainly moving in a direction, even though we did spend the entire episode with the Targaryens. We did see Otto a little bit. Um, and man, he's just a smug asshole all the time, isn't he? Just the way he stands is starting to annoy me. Yeah, just the way he's like, Aegon has every like signal or like thing that makes him like appear to be the king. So like all these, everything else except the like one thing that matters, um, right, is being the named heir. So like he got yeah. everything except being the named heir. Um, I wish he didn't have a crown, but they obviously had an extra crown laying around. I think it's more impactful that she has the actual real crown. That was a really cool part. Yeah, well, I think, uh, yeah, it's super impactful for two ways on both sides, because I believe Aegon is wearing Aegon's crown, the original Aegon. Yep. So that's like a huge piece of Targaryen history that he's got on the top of his head. Not to say what Rhaenyra has on the top of her head doesn't have a huge history behind it. It certainly does. So it's cool that they, you know, they they brought two different crowns into it and they're setting it up like a true succession for the throne war, even though it's kind of already settled as far as the high towers see it right i mean you got to imagine that at the end of the season even though they mentioned in the episode the dragons are so lopsided for the targaryens versus the high towers that the high towers are in a much more powerful position currently right like they have the throne they have the capital they have everything they need around them and if you hear the numbers that Damon calls out, like it's not a staggering amount of, of soldiers to go to war with. You it's know what like I mean? none. Yeah. It's none. So oh, it's uh it's super super interesting to see how that plays because I think that and we saw it a little bit in this episode, Vagar is going to be a huge wild card, obviously. Like that dragon yeah. is just badass, dude. I, I don't I don't care what anybody says. And the way they use him in this episode, so good, dude. So good. Like the haunting imagery at the end of this episode is so cool. I'm glad you say haunting because I was going to say even even not just the end bit there, which is very spooky, very scary. Right. Um, Vagar is just kind of lurking in the parking lot. Um, large yeah. <laughs> and large and ominous as he is. And Storm's End is just absolutely awesome. I'm glad we so finally cool. got to see that. Um, but I'm glad you say haunting because even even the table here, right? Like the orange candles, like just gives off a very like Halloween type vibe. This whole episode, yeah. Um, scary, spooky dragon stone. There's just a lot of just good. Like if there was to be a Game of Thrones Halloween episode, I guess this was the closest <laughs> thing they could do. Yeah. Um, and then to top it off with just a very, very scary kind of sequence for a uh, old Jace here. Um, yeah. Poor, yeah. Poor definitely. Um, definitely. Uh, yeah, I love, love the way. First off, Storm's End is great. The new Baratheon looks like a Baratheon. He's a little close to like Zach Galifianakis's stepbrother <laughs> that didn't quite break into the industry, but right. I'll, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it to him. I, I think he feels like a Baratheon. Uh, and I love Storm's End. We've never seen Storm's End. We've heard of it multiple times in the original series, but I think we saw it maybe a little bit at the beginning of the show at, at some point, I think. Uh, Rhaenyra goes there to get like a, a husband or something. I can't yeah. remember exactly off the top of my head. Right. Yeah. Super cool. And it's really like just the, the light, the dark lightning storm thing going on in this episode, dude, it was so cool. Like one of the best dragon sequences from the show. And there's been several really good ones so far. Yeah. And I can see why uh, Stannis was so just kind of like beside himself and like bitter <laughs> for like holding that for however long he did, like just yeah. stuck on that outcrop rock. Right. <laughs> on, the, on the seaside and the cliffs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And you see how he held it so easily because. Yeah. It's, it's literally like on an island, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like um the Iron Island kind of situation yeah. where the yeah. keep is just like up, up and out there. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'd be worried someone would like siege it down, like hit the base of the rock in the water and just collapse it all. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Maybe not, but yeah, um, this is, this is an entire like Targaryen episode. And I think, I think Renice in the last episode was the Targaryen side bit, right? She was only one present. Whereas I think in this one, it would be Otto. He made himself full more present in this one. Yeah, Um, definitely. That was a cool rematch on the bridge. I don't know what Matt Smith says, but it's like absolutely awesome. Like it's just complete like gibberish. Yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't, I didn't turn <laughs> subtitles on, but the way he was just like, let's just end this like farce is basically yeah, he's, like what he's done. He said, but yeah. he said it in like ten like ridiculous words. It sounds right, like, awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's a uh, you know, I, it's like every two steps he takes forward for me jumping sides. Damon also takes like three steps back for me. So he does a lot of sh- kind of shitty stuff in this this episode as well, mm-hmm. including grabbing Rhaenyra by the neck and and trying yep. to strangle her. But I get. I get that this dude, A, from the beginning of the show, has been looking for violence. Like, this is his thing, and now it's finally here, right? He finally has the opportunity to bring the Targaryens back to where they came from, from Aegon's Conquest. And it's here, and now Rhaenyra is like, eh, you know, being it's her dad. fine. But yeah, being her dad. And uh, I, I like that because I like the parallels there. I think that thought process, process that she has goes a long way to getting... Rainis and Corliss on their on her mm-hmm. side as well, so I yeah. I think it was very important. I think that's certainly done uh, at by the end of this episode. I think it's it's wartime for both sides. If you ask me, maybe she comes back and and is still you know up in the air about it. But yeah. Damon's definitely more torn up about all of this than she is seemingly right. Like he's he's trying to say the king was murdered and all kinds of stuff. So. Yeah, he's just I don't know. he's just always fast to action, and that's just his temperament too. And plus, I mean, that's how he's going to deal with his his brother dying. Um, yeah, and he just is, isn't very emotionally um, complete because right. the same way he kind of that's how he dealt with her essentially having a miscarriage, which I think was almost kind of pretty apparent at that state because she was so early. She was like two months early, I think. Um, yeah, but he wasn't even there and like she was even calling for him and he was just distracting himself with planning and plotting the war. And she kind of holds that against him to some degree too. Cause she kind of says in spite, like she, he, you know, he's off pl- plotting his war. Um, right. Yeah. And this, yeah, this is definitely that moment. He's trying to like bring it all to like a point where like finally, like the last straw was like, Oh, we literally just saw everyone like two nights ago. And he just happens to die and they happen to have themselves put together enough to crown Aegon. That, that, right. Like it's just it looks bad. It just absolutely it looks bad. Yeah. And a cool, I guess, like counter parallel is like she she's it's funny, the the blacks have the Viserys crown, which is like more of the peacetime king, right? The peacetime uh like way of doing things. And then Aegon has the you know the conqueror's crown and, and yeah. the greens very much like kind of conquer like conquered through usurping right the throne and like that's more how they're positioning themselves to be uh, especially with like aemon and their kind of first blow like aggressiveness like it's pretty forward um yeah you know it's it doesn't look good and i i shared i shared a meme in discord that was basically how you know everyone coming up with all these justifications why you know the blacks versus the greens, like who's the better side, who has the better claim when, and there's just like the people that are like, literally, uh, Rhaenyra is the named heir of yeah. the king. Easy period. as that. Um, yeah, period. I yeah. I don't, Game know, over. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why you need to talk your way around that. Like it's just, no, you don't. Just and it, it is. <laughs> yeah. And it, I mean, I don't even know if you would be able to tur- talk your way around that. If the high towers weren't complete shit shows and they are complete shit shows. <laughs> like they're, Without question, even though we have Damon, who's the wild card on the other mm-hmm. side, there's multiple wild cards on the high towers, and they're super scummy as well. And that something from the beginning of the show kind of shocked me. Like I thought they were going to be the the put together ones, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they kind yeah. of framed them that way in the beginning of the show, and it's just not the case by the end. So. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty obvious. They usurped the throne pretty, pretty clearly here, right? Like, there's no mm-hmm. if ands, or buts around it. Now, and, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and that's not to say you can't be on Team Green. Um, you just right. have to acknowledge that you're for usurping the throne. That's yeah. fine. Like, I was for a ton of terrible things that happened in Game of Thrones. It doesn't yeah. mean <laughs> you can't be on their side. It's just right. um, don't try to explain your way around it. I yeah, it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, so I, I'm definitely in that camp of Lords where it's like, no, I'm pretty sure this is pretty like non-negotiable. It was pretty clear. High towers. I don't know how many fancy things you want to like put around it, but you guys just clearly are just 
shitty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Through and through. And I hope that, you know, it's just interesting, man, because I, you, you would have thought that by the end of this episode that the Targaryens would have made the first kind of strike, yeah. if you will. And it's mm-hmm. not really what happens. Now, we can get into that later on where I, it's obvious that <laughs> Aemon didn't mean to do what he, what he oh, ended right. up doing at the end of that episode. But, um, yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. It seems like they, they usurp the throne. You would think they have the throne. They have the capital. Let's just chill. Like I not send a raven. Don't even send uh, like that's a super brave thing to send your your hand to the enemy fortress to hand, pass a message. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean the hands floating around. Um, not that Aemon needs to be like babysat. He's m- very capable to flying around. But you know to send her younger sons. Like I get it's kind of maybe their time to like come of age. But I'm pretty sure it's Jace, right? Jace, the one yeah. that got chomped. Um, yep. Even the size of his dragon, right? Like that's a baby dragon. Like that's yeah, a season yeah. three, season four, um, right? Danny dragon, and that's just not safe. Um, especially, I was even thinking, I'm like, ooh, storms in. Like you're literally kind of moving south, like past King's Landing, like very easily, you know, high tower dragon territory. Um, yeah, and, and yeah. I love that line by Aemon where he's like, you know, you think you can just freely float about the realm uh trying to steal my brother's crown like that's a great line because it's kind of true it's like yeah and i like how the brathian also like back that up was like you know we're not just gonna kill an envoy um let's like, yeah. have some stability here right. or at least you know attack him right. so that was just that was a really really good sequence but it kind of speaks to yeah those weren't those weren't the the smoothest moves like um should kill no. Otto. That would have been nice. Um, yeah, yeah. It would have just been, been nice. To, yeah, yeah. It would have just been nice to, to, to see that happen. Because even though I was like totally on his side in the beginning of the show, loved him. And I still do love him as a character. He's just such a smug little <laughs> asshole. Every scene that he, he's always standing upright and his like dragons flying around him and shit. And he's just chill about it. But yeah, the, the decision that Rhaenyra made seems really funky to me because... I'm pretty sure Otto told her, like, we already have ravens going that way or messengers mm-hmm. going that way. So she turns around and sends her children to, I mean, she knows she's sending them into danger. And just because yeah. she's like, hey, you're not going to fight because you're just messengers. Th- that's not how this world works. And she's got to know that by now, right? Like, she has to know. Right. And 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 I I like that how that happened. I mean, we're just gonna talk about it because I like that it um it wasn't anything devious really by like typical games Game of Thrones standards where yeah oh welcome to a wedding you're safe right in this environment. now we're gonna kill you all yeah. or no yeah you are an envoy we're not just gonna kill envoys because technically that should be a protected uh, duty but I think even Aemon knew that and he was just really from like they're cousins, even though he's technically his uncle, um, just like messing around with him, like as kids, like, you know, I have the biggest yeah. dragon. I'm just going to mm-hmm. like torment you through the skies um, and taunt you. And it came down to just the dragons, like not liking each other and being upset. And they both lost control. Um, I don't know why Jace's dragon uh, decided to do something stupid like that. Like, you well, I mean, home, little, little yeah, bird. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, cool because we haven't really seen I mean we saw a little bit of the dragons maybe not listening with Danny in the original series but I I think we see it a lot more here where it's like these kids do not have control of the dragons and this is one of the parallels that I was talking about from the original show where Viserys very clearly says that like this is you know the the thought that the Targaryens control the dragons is a myth or whatever the exact quote is Yep. so we see that at the end here which is super cool and yeah, I mean, I, I I was really excited with the way that they did this this chase sequence because I talked about it earlier in the show. I hope they use the the agility and maneuverability of the smaller dragons against Vagar, and they did multiple scenes in this chase sequence. But, um, yeah, it's just like a I I gotta point out that dude lose the eye patch because you look way more badass with the freaking sapphire eye or whatever you got going <laughs> on there like that's cool looking like don't hide that with an eye patch 
Um, maybe it's new and he unveiled it. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe. But yeah, I, I, it, I think he's just turning the tables on him because he still remembers the pig joke, right? He still remembers yep. the the kind of laughing about it at the dinner sequence. So he's just screwing with him. He's just trying to chase him and scare him. And unfortunately, they're both dealing with dragons that they're not that close to yet. Mm. And I got to be honest, if I was that little dragon, I'd probably shoot fire at that big ass thing, too, that was chasing me. So I can't blame yes, him for true. doing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He was just like, you back off, like, yeah, leave dude, me alone off. kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and it also shows that like these are still very much children. Like they're not, right. they're not very mature at all. Um, and that's to Rhaenyra's point. Like also she's like, none of our dragons have been to war, but I don't know why and how she says that when they have been um, like in the stepstones, like yeah. her axis has been the war, even though um, the Valerians have to, and like one of them's unclaimed because it was Laenor's, but I th- I, there wasn't as much standing. I was like, yeah, some of your dragons have been. I mean, you got Damon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Damon's technically still way more dangerous than Aemon, even though it, he's on. For sure. Well, uh, I don't Vega. know, man. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that that dragon is just such a freaking wild card, dude. Like, that thing yeah. is massive. It's, like, disturbingly large. And we saw it how big it was throughout the show. But in this episode specifically, that like shot from underneath where you see it yeah. flying over top. It's like, dude, holy shit. Like that thing is massive. So yeah, even like over the Canyon too, like just engulfs like the entire top of the Canyon. Just right. Yeah. This is a frightening, like you don't see that very much in any media period. So, no. you know, no. we don't, haunting, we don't haunting shot with him just chilling out in the, the parking he's kind of like area. Frankenstein. He's kind of <laughs> yeah. like a big lumbering Frankenstein. Like he's yeah. he's that type of frightening. He's scary. He's a scary monster by all means. Whereas oh, like yeah. um Arax, Arax, um, which is Jace's and this is Luke's. Luke died to Chris. Oh, was so. it Luke? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get him all mixed um, up. <laughs> You know, he, he's a nice little dragon. He's fun. He, you know, he's got like some cool markings and stuff, and then there's just big ugly Vagar that's just like a goblin. Yeah. And a grumpy, grumpy little shit, too. Like, he's like Caraxes as well. Like, he's just, just grumpy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm i curious to see, because I I really enjoyed the them talking about the wild dragons as well. They saw yeah. three wild dragons, and they're all roosting on Dragonstone. And we got to see one of them, too. And I, I like, I don't know. I just really liked that sequence, even though the singing was a little odd. Like I just mm. thought that that whole sequence was really you haunting. Like Larry singing. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just him. You know, Matt Smith singing. I don't know. <laughs> it was uh, yeah, it was a little weird, but he was just like, I haven't, I've had very minimal dialogue this entire series. Can I sing a song? Yeah, can I sing a song? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I'm gonna sing a song. Yeah. Um, and we we looked at this uh in the first episode of the companion series, and I figured we'd look at it again because there's definitely some updated data right because everything we saw before um the series started was obviously with a a lot of context whether it was the family tree we looked at which i think there's probably much better family trees now that we can have actually a family tree of house of the dragon the show right right? yeah yeah, it it deviates a little bit from the the real one um but this is this is our dragons here um and i will say the original one where these like images are from of each dragon was showed it differently it showed a huge disparity between like showing drogon from game of thrones is just right. way too small way too small yeah. this yeah, more accurately places it and it makes us fixes a lot of the surprise that he was really that small it doesn't look like that um so this actually says that drogon was right here between cyrax and melees who we we have seen quite a bit at this point um melee's making her debut in the last episode and we've seen cyrax plenty of times um so that in my mind looks better fitted for where drogon is in terms of size and also in terms of like the size of all these dragons now in this chart vagar i would still argue he still might be bigger than this chart leads on significantly yeah i would i I would agree with that even looking at him with arax or however you say it i think he is a little bit bigger yeah yeah so, yeah, so the whole, like, dragon, like, dragon versus dragon, like, stack up, you know, I just don't think it was a good assessment overall. Like, Damon's argument there was, like, they have four, we have 13, and, like, one of theirs is even, like, a baby. And I'm like, well, 
I would count Eric as a baby. Like that's a right. pretty tiny, like little baby dragon. Like he was really just blowing smoke. You know what I mean? Like, he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a very sound argument, but his point was we have more dragons, whether or not yeah. that's like tangible, like an up <laughs> is to be yeah. determined. Yeah. I mean, I think number wise it is, but number wise, yeah. Like I said, dude, Vagar is bigger than all of these dragons by a significant margin. And he's, yes. dr- he's, being uh he his rider is like one of the biggest wild cards on the show so far right so yeah yeah he's gonna be a much bigger issue than i think damon is giving him credit for like yeah maybe they do have four or whatever he says but one of those four is the oldest biggest dragon alive right now you know (laughs) yeah and i don't know in terms of Vagar's is absolutely massive. Um, mm-hmm. The one that we see like deep in the, I always call it the catacombs or the cave for now that uh, that was, that was just Sarah or just Sarah, the prior prior King to his Viserys. dragon. Yeah. 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 yeah it, that's his dragon. Um, and that's like Ver, Vermion or he's like, he's the fourth largest dragon. So he's not too far behind Vagar. Um, right. but definitely like, old and grumpy also like very big lurk dragon um, yeah <laughs> so i'd imagine um one of damon's daughters is gonna claim that um because yeah he, that would be a quick ideal. glance at glance at her when he's kind of describing like all the dragons and he's like you know there's this one you know these ones that could be claimed by someone um right they, they glance <laughs> to her and she's kind of like looking at him like mm. yeah uh, which i don't know why she hasn't claimed a dragon yet um she, she should get on that because they're out there. Um, but all to say, like, uh, Damon is, he's got the dragon thing on lock. I think he's not completely level head explaining it because he didn't even like mention to everybody like, oh, I got some sort of weird song I'm singing to a right. big one in the basement. <laughs> um, don't worry, I got this covered. Um, yeah, he, he just doesn't, he just doesn't explain himself very well. He's just not, no, a man of, like, he's a man of few words. Yeah. Yeah, he's just like, just just listen to me. I got to figure it out. We yeah. got more dragons. Um, we'll be more violent. Uh, yeah. But yeah, and I, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, like, I, I don't think that we have we seen Sunfire at all, which is Mm-mm. Aegon's. Yeah, which is odd. Uh, not. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to see all the dragons that were on that chart eventually that are alive during this time. Eventually, you know, season two, season three. Even uh, Helena, his wife, um, she has Dreamfire. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we've... I, I, I think they had maybe mentioned Dreamfire as the one that laid the eggs, I believe, from earlier on in the series. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm curious if we're ever going to see, like, where Danny's eggs came from. Because you have to presume that they're coming from this time frame because I believe, and I could be wrong, I believe a, a vast majority of these dragons are going to be dead by the end of the show. Maybe mm-hmm. even all of them. So you have to think that one of these dragons is going to lay those three eggs and they're going to get stolen and, and lost to time for a couple hundred years or something. But, yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, I... I'm trying to figure out because I think that this is like the death of the dragons in, in the history. I could be wrong though. This, this chart here has uh Drogon coming off of dream fire. Yeah. So dream fire okay. might be steady laying eggs um, just as its owner is. And that, that's, that's, that's an, it's an interesting thing. Cause we touched on this earlier about like how um, Cyrax had three eggs conveniently as um Rhaenyra is having like three eggs so yeah. in dream fires having eggs I think on the other side maybe those are ones that are eventually drogons but that kind of lines up with Aegon and Helena having children so it's and they even showed that flash cut scenes between Cyrax and Rhaenyra so there is some sort of like bond they're alluding to yeah that's a, a yeah. female dragon I was wondering I was their, wondering about that because it, because it felt like Damon had like I don't want to say he had like he could control Caraxes, 
But in that in that scene where he's talking to the Kingsguard, he just I don't know if I, I, I need more context to how the dragon and rider thing works. Like, are they just mm-hmm. is it like Viserys says where they just don't control them? They're just wild animals. Or is there something else going on as far as like telekinetic thoughts there is, between I the rider there, and the. Yeah, I think there's something in terms of like the bond because they go to length to say like you you know you you bond with a dragon and maybe yeah um maybe that is stronger in some situations especially maybe if they were like bonded from birth versus just being claimed because clearly i don't think Amond and vagar are ever going to be like bonded i just feel like that's just a toxic relationship they're in <laughs> yeah and it's yeah, just never sure. going to be fully fully fluid as maybe Damon and Caraxes or Cyrax and Rhaenyra would be. Um, yeah. Well, you, you have to think that it almost seems like the show is showing that by showing that there's all these wild dragons out there and nobody's going after them. Maybe it's significantly more difficult to bond with a dragon that's already been, that's already had a rider or has is super old and has never had a rider versus getting one you know, as you're when you're a baby and growing up with it. So it seems like they're even hinting at that a little bit. But yeah, I think I think Vagar just like likes the goon around and he wanted another rider, maybe something to that effect. And that's why versus other ones, maybe, you know, they're just napping like they're just taking this time off. Yeah, they're they're in retirement. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. they're in retirement, bro. (laughs) Um, I don't know. Maybe Damon's going to be able to like fly one and mind control the other. He's like some sort of dragon wizard. Um, Yeah. Yeah. We'll see, man, because I know that there's a lot of like, I know there's a thing called dragon dreams in, in this series. I don't know that we've really ever seen anything about it. I think it's hinted at maybe with the Aegon dreaming stuff, but they haven't really shown it in the shows. I think it's mostly from the books. So I don't know what that even is, if it's just dreams or if it's them controlling the dragon in a deeper way. But I don't know. We're going to get all the answers to this, you know, freaking three years from now when we get season two, probably. <laughs> so don't do that to them. <laughs> Dude, it's two I'm years. Telling you. No, two yeah, years. hopefully, hopefully two years. Slow burn, real slow burn. Yeah, um, that, I mean, like that. I, I I'll be honest with you. This might be up there for my most anticipated second season or subsequent season of any show because i feel like just what we built here is so good that i just Mm -hmm. need i need more of the the meat and the war is finally here unfortunately it ended in the you know it started basically in the last scene of the final episode of season one yeah but i'm ready for the war you know yeah no and they spent a good amount of time just setting things up and even looking at that table which is um, pretty sure now it is the same table from yeah. uh, Game of Thrones, and I would like to say it's carved out dragon glass because that's how they're able to get the glowing effect where it's very yeah that thinly, would make sense yeah thinly carved because I was like wood wouldn't do that stone wouldn't do that wood would kind of do that but it you know that's some pretty um pretty uh carbonized wood if that's the yeah case. so yeah. I definitely think it's dragon glass um and it, it that it was just absolutely awesome to see um so cool man I, I, yeah and i remember seeing screenshots of this before the show aired and i'm like do they have is it like lighting up is it glowing in the dark like what the mm-hmm. hell is going on here so i like the way they showed how they put the coals and stuff in there to light it up um but yeah just a cool visual and i'm i'm sure we're gonna get more than enough of this table in the in the future because this is like the war table now I like to say the 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 team with the better map wins, but um, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, technically in Game of Thrones, the team with this map ended up winning. I um, mean, though Cersei had a really awesome map painted. She did too in the yeah. atrium floor, but she didn't yeah. win. Correct. Um, <laughs> but I don't know when I, when they're doing the first pan over of this table. Um, at least when they're get, like the 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 montage where it lights up. Um, the like melted candle, like the old just like melted candles, like on the table, like. The attention to detail in this show is just like so bananas. good. Yeah. Um, so good. And even dude. like Renice, when she first is telling Damon and Rhaenyra that Viserys is dead, and then she's like, there's more. And like she, she like makes a move around the table to come closer to them. The King's Guard like mirrors her movement and like yeah. keeps his like maintained distance. And I was just like, these are just such cool details. Um, yeah. It's like stuff that maybe was missing from season eight. 
especially the attention yeah. to detail, like simple stuff like the Starbucks cup. It's just a little stuff like that goes a long way. And we talked about it earlier, like the cobwebs on, on the Valerian, mm-hmm. you know, Lego set the Viserys had in his like that, that is something they could have easily been like, yeah, like we're not going to do that, but they did do it. And it adds quite a bit, even though it probably took 15 minutes to do, you know? Maybe yeah. And long, someone's like, longer. Hey, we should make that look like dusty. And like, yeah, old. someone's like on it. Um, right. <laughs> we need some melted candles here. Um, yeah. And there's something the Baratheon, um, something in there that was like super. Oh, like <laughs> I like this happens in Game of Thrones, um, and it's these like awkward where they 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 stop the action of like the sequence with like some stupid, um, just the way life was. Like he can't read, so he's like, "Where's the mace?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, like, yeah. That's, yeah. This tense, this tense moment where like you got Eamon looking on, you know, and he's got this really hard ass like stance. Like he, he one, he dresses really well and he just really presents yeah. himself uh, much like Damon does um, very much. Yeah. And that all just kind of gets stopped. And there's just this awkward like silence where Dude, Luke is like, great. he's yeah. like waiting and he's like getting like stared down by his uncle and. Baratheon can't read and he's waiting for the baser to come read it. It's just, yeah. that's just so much fun. And that's just like a fun bit to add in there. Cause it's just like, well, yeah, like the king is like, not every king's just going to open up the letter and read it. They need the Mesa to come. Right, right. Exactly. It's very realistic. The, uh, y- y- you have to assume that a lot of people didn't know how to read back in this real time mm-hmm. in our real world. Right. So I, I think it's super realistic and I thought it was kind of like a comedic relief at the, at the time yeah. too, to, 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 to slice up the tension a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I'm very excited because I'm almost certain then I'm going to make the prediction that we're certainly going back to Winterfell at some point in season two. No doubt. We, we have two dragons going to two different places. I think the Eerie and Winterfell. Yep. So I'd be shocked if we don't see Winterfell. Jace is going to make a double stop. He's going to stop and see his cousins in the Eerie. And then he is going to Winterfell um, to speak with the Starks. Meanwhile, um, Damon, I'm pretty sure is still going to the Riverlands to talk to the, you know, the lovely Frey folk. Yeah, always a joy to deal with. It sounds like, like even like that is such a family, man. Like they got at least like four hundred years of just douchebaggery under the. Yeah, yeah, and I, man, the one dude in this episode, and I can't remember which it was, but they should have used him for the the current Frey because even like was walking and talking and and moving (laughs) like Frey did. But yeah, I I think that we're gonna start to see now that we've built this this world that we've got going on basically on Dragonstone and in King's Landing is base are, are two big locations we went to. I think we're certainly going to open up more now and see more of the world. And I hope we see some places that we haven't seen and some places that we have seen. I'm sure we're going to get, you know, I want some, I want a lot of, I, I just want to go back to Winterfell, bro. <laughs> like I want to see what Winterfell <laughs> looks like at, at this time. Yeah. The Eerie too. I'd like to see the Eerie, but uh, I'm still, I like, I like the throwback houses, like seeing houses. Like, yeah. Like I love seeing the Lannisters in this because it's not the same Lannisters, but you can definitely tell they're Lannisters. So I'm really excited to see the Starks 200 years before yeah. you know, the Starks we know. Yeah, definitely. And it's cool in here that they call out that they have the Lannister fleet, which I don't even think was a thing in the original show. And I think that the reason for that, they're not known for having a fleet in the original right, show right. is what I'm saying. But I they, think they it's because... They an army for sure. Yeah. I think it's because the um, Greyjoys burned the Lannister fleet prior to the show. And that was in one of those like uh, histories and lore videos. It was during I'm the sure. rebellion, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or so it was I, during I that rebellion, the, that specific one with the Greyjoys. Right, the Iron right. Islands, which is yep. separate than Robert's rebellion. I'm yeah, sure. yes, yes. Totally separate. Yeah. So I think that's that's it's just a cool little nod that they're not really known for that in in game Mm -hmm. of thrones but back back then they are before all that happened so yeah just the little details are are super cool and it's cool to see that it seems like we have people on the show working on the show that are excited to work on the show and want to keep things kosher with the book at least and uh i from you know i 
I, it's taken everything in me not to read this freaking book because it's like one book. It would be easy, you know, but I I, I want to save it, even though I, I think it would be kind of cool to read it and then watch the show and see the little stories because there's there's stuff in this first season that was like a sentence in the book and they sp- spun it into a much bigger, yeah. bigger story. So I don't know my other hope. So I want to see Winterfell. Obviously, and I gotta see Dorn, man. Dorn's gotta come in. They've been mentioning Dorn so much in this this first season that it's just gotta happen at some point, right? Yeah, it'll it'll be, it'll be interesting. And you know, speaking of how I think we would see Dorn, um, the Sea Snake is back, and Corliss is back. He, uh, I guess, was saved um, to everyone's misinformation, um, and they, he did make it back onto a boat to be cared mm-hmm. for and nurse back to health. And um, essentially I believe he like kind of awoke here on Dragonstone, um, fully recovered with his wife by his side. Um, so it's good to have him back. Um, Cause I like him and I think I like him now more that he's kind of gone through like a near death experience. He's kind of shed the whole going for the throne vibe. Yeah. Um, yeah. To Renice's, he was hoping like, all right, here, I'm finally on board. Like, she <laughs> yeah. just turns around. She's like, you know what about that? Um, right. Right. Yeah. I think a that, great job. <laughs> yeah. I think that he woke up twice there. He woke up obviously from his wounds and he woke up to the fact that he's not going to get the throne for his wife <laughs> and he's finally ready to give it up. And it's cool to see, uh, Renice, who's been a, against it really the entire show kind of throw a curveball at him when he finally gives in and she's like you know she's the only one holding the realm together right now and i was like man it i mean it's kind of true if you think about it she yeah. really is because everyone in that room is trying to get her to go to war she's literally the only one holding out and yeah. I, I think that's a lot of her father probably coming out now that's what she, yeah, and then she kind of says that too like that's the duty she's charged with is to maintain what's yeah. best for the realm. Yeah. And she's got that bigger that bigger goal in mind as well, the Song of Ice and Fire which she brings up too. Yeah. And uh for whatever reason is shocked that Damon didn't know that. Like I don't know yeah. where he would have heard that. Like, I guess in I guess in her moment of like aloneness cuz I think there's a lot of things hitting her um in this episode cuz like this moment of you are queen has come and passed and there like nothing went well in that right. situation. Yeah. And, you know, congratulations, Renera, you now are officially your father. Not you, you have these moments that come up upon you and nothing goes right. Like welcome yeah. to your father's life every <laughs> single day. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like everything <laughs> so you've ever true. waited for, um, has happened and everything just went terrible this day. Um, right. Child, <laughs> your throne's been usurped. Um, your husband is not being very supportive. Um, like no, nothing, nothing's going well. No. Um, but with Renice too and Corliss, um, Renice is also, I think Corliss is, you know, they didn't really show this, but I would, I'm just kind of pulling this out. I think he was happy to see that she kind of had a renewed purpose for once. Cause she's been very passive, just very laissez faire about everything. Like she just doesn't care. Yeah. Um, but they have now basically lost everything. They just really have their granddaughters um, and each other. So I think he like he he was very kind of reinvigorated by the fact that she kind of has purpose again, in that she's like, hey, uh, we're gonna you know, Rhaenyra's doing a good job, and you know we're gonna kind of stand on this side of the line. He's like, sweet, we, I got a fleet. Um, let's make yeah. this happen. Yeah, and and being useful. Um, because we're, I think we're quickly going to run out of like useful military minds in this situation. Like there's going to be a lot of fresh, dumb mistakes made. Right. Um, he's like, yeah, well, you know, I secure the stepstones and all of that. So that's a plus. Uh, we're going to blockade that. Um, no, no trade to King's Landing. We're going to seal up the bay. So lots of cool, just like map strategy things there. Yeah. Um, and definitely. so the stepstones is way down in the south, and right around the bend would be like. Stepstones are south of Storm's End. So this like I'm pretty sure they're between Storm's End on the way to Dorne. Dorne and then obviously yeah, yeah. then it goes Dorne, um, High Tower, um, Old Port, Old Town. Yeah, Old Town. And then yeah. and then Lannister's up the coast there on the west side. So 
it'll be interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of stuff at sea just because like dragons do well at sea. Um, there's definitely talk of navies. The Lannisters have a navy. So I, I I'm with you, uh, Chad. I think we might see Doran at least in passing, at least yeah. like off the coast of Doran. Um, yeah. so far, like what we've been really light on is like, I have a standing army of 10,000. Oh, I have a standing army of 20. Like that hasn't really happened. I don't think there is really an assembled army because it's been so peaceful forever. Like right. I think they're more commonly used to, like Damon said, like they've got a hundred crossbowmen, 300 men at arms, like enough to hold the castle and march around. Yeah. Right. And dragon stones pretty easily. He even says it's easily defended, but I, yeah, we'll see. I'm very hopeful that we're going to get some cool naval battles because that is something that was really cool in Game of Thrones, but we just got sprinkles of it here and there, really. And I feel like it's a big part of this world, especially with Coralus in the in the fold. Like, we're going to have to see some cool sea battles at some point. Yeah. But Dorne has to return to the fold at some point. I don't know in the history when they do because they're not right now. They're not part of the, the Seven Kingdoms. So, and if they are, they're not, are they calling out King of the Seven Kingdoms? Yep. Are they saying they seven? Say six. Yep. Do they? Okay, interesting. Because I thought that Dorn was still holding out, but could be wrong on that. I mean, they might, they might count Dorn in that still, because yeah. even, I think they're just in like open, like, not my king kind of right. like, <laughs> yeah. like stance. Um, yeah. Because I think, because they make that, passing comment in a small council meeting where it's like oh you know what happened like did we are we at war of dorn or something um so i think it's just like one of those sidebar conversations that's out there and you know viserys wasn't gonna be like yeah let's march in the door and just reclaim right. it and put our flags down he's like nah you know what they're not really hurting nobody i'll still you know count it in my seven in my title um yeah yeah uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm curious to see where everybody lands sidewise here. Like, I'm really hopeful the Starks land on the Targaryen side. I don't know if they do or not. We obviously know the Baratheons are, are not going to land there. Who knows with the phrase? Like, I, I, I don't even want to see the fucking phrase in the show, to be honest with you, because they're <laughs> such scumbags. Like, they, I'm sure it's just in the DNA, even though this is 130 something years before or 170 years, whatever yeah. it is. I'm sure they're still just as scummy, but I could yeah. be wrong. Yeah, we yeah, it's going to be interesting. And I, I'm still kind of salty that they really haven't um, ca you know, cashed in on the whole Damon is Lord of the Vale. Um, like, just sure, that's completely coming. ignored that. Yeah, yeah. It, it must be coming, but they've completely ignored that. He is. He's even ignored that. Like, I'm just surprised at the lack of um continuation of that whole that whole like mini sequence of like I'm gonna kill my wife. Obviously that was necessary for him to marry Rhaenyra, but at the time it was just it's gotta like, be more, really yeah. it's gotta be more going on there. Yeah, because it, it, if that was the oh, only case if that's the if only that, go ahead. I wonder if that dude who had beef with, over the whole situation that called Damon out and like you murdered her that's what I'm like saying. it's gonna be yeah. like nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If it was the the only goal was so that he could marry Rhaenyra, that would have been the end of it. But we we hear mm. that we see that dude. He's discussing it at the wedding or whatever was going. I think it was a wedding. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think there's more to that. But yeah, there's you know, I think that George R. R. Martin said that there's going to have to be at least four seasons of this, four ten episode seasons of the show yeah. to tell the whole story. Which is cool. Well, it's more than I thought we were going to get. I thought we were going to make like two, maybe. Yeah. You know, three. So Jace is probably going to get some pushback in, in the reach than I, or the veil, I imagine. Yeah. With the errands, he might run into some problems there, like episode one. Yeah. Um, so that'll be interesting too, because one, we have lots of dragon travel. People get around quickly, but also means like easily quick bits of action. I would really like to see like some cool military type sequences with like dragons and like i like see someone just flying a dragon and be like oh look there's a giant navy or like oh look there's a giant yeah. army um yeah. just as like a scouting mechanism too so i'm just excited for warfare with dragons abundant. yeah me too um, yeah abundant dragons that's the that's the best part of it because under 20 but more than 10 under 20 yeah more than three which is what we're used to so <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> that quickly uh 
they, they just got chomped up really quickly. Right, the right. Started. And we haven't, outside of the long night, the the episode of Game of Thrones where the Night King dies, we haven't seen dragon on dragon action. So that's what I'm most excited to see how these dragons fight each other, how they kill I mean, each other, how they take each other down. I mean, we saw that at the end of this episode, but it was kind of like a. Arax breed fire on another dragon. That's pretty violent. Yeah, yeah, but it, it just felt like, yeah, it just felt like a. I don't know, like a bear swatting a fly out of the sky. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it just it, it, it definitely like Vagar has big like uh, episode one um, Star Wars vibes. Like there's always a bigger fish and there's this yeah, like, yeah. giant. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's all I think of when I see Vagar is a giant um, Naboo fish. Yeah. <laughs> eating another Naboo fish. So. Yeah. So, I mean, outside of. I rewatched this episode. I'm like, not a lot really happens in this episode, but like so much just like kind of unfolding of just things, because really there's just, there's the initial sequence of like the birthing, um, them learning of Viserys and just like really everything that happened in episode nine. Um, there's that sequence and really then builds up to the, the burial or the burning of the child and then her getting crowned. Yeah, we get the table lighting up. Um, so like that's like the first part, and then there's the middle part of what are we going to do, right? Um, and I'm I was surprised at how long that last part is, where yeah, Luke is out there with um, Aemon and like Storm's End. So you know, there's not really a whole lot that goes on, but like just seeing the other just seeing what the blacks, how they react to this was plenty enough. Cause it's like, we have all the context from the last episode. And then so now they're giving us all the context on the other side. So it's interesting to see how many times they're going to use this technique where it's, we see one side in one episode. So it's kind of cool because we're like, what are, what's the other side doing right now? Like they're definitely doing things. And we see some of the things like Eamon going to storm's end. Whereas like in episode nine, we're like, they are unfortunately have no idea anything's going on, uh, the blacks. So they are off to like the they didn't get a head start. Um, but it's just cool because it's like we're not getting that like constant back and forth that we're used to in Game of Thrones. We're like, hey, here's what this entire like group is doing. But I know, I know the the greens have been up to God knows what um, else has been happening back right. in King's Landing and. Damon makes the passing remark in terms of like, I got some, you know, I got some buddies in the city watch, but I can't really speak to numbers and stuff. So there's like that iron in the fire. So lots of both new stuff and then some touchbacks to things we already knew were going to kind of come along like this city yeah. watch and things like that. Yeah, I will say that I, I, I do think they maybe need to workshop the, the end of these seasons a little bit more like this in in a whole did not feel like a finale to me Correct. like i think i think it would have been more ideal to have this be eight and nine these two episodes be eight and nine and then have the 10th episode as the shit popping off, off finally yeah. you know mm-hmm. uh, but you know I, I i give it to them i get that they've got a lot of background to tell on these characters a lot to, a lot of setup to do it probably did need the whole season i think it's definitely going to pay off in the long run for us as the viewer to get through this season the way that it panned yeah. out. But yeah, there's just like, I don't know, like even episode nine was like, man, yeah, I mean, okay. It's not, it's not the penultimate game of Thrones episode. I'm typically familiar with this also didn't feel like the finale episode of game of Thrones that I'm typically familiar with. That being said, I get that. It's not game of Thrones. I get that. Yeah. I get that. I, I like, I, I technically the last episode was still, I like that episode more than this episode. And that's kind of like a, a thing though, too. Usually the penultimates are better episodes yeah. overall. So I did not have high hopes of this being like, Oh, this is going to be better than the last episode. I kind of knew it wasn't going to be as good. Right. Um, and that's fine because there's, like you said, there's plenty of setup. There's, you know, plenty of that's going to go on. And like, we're obviously just very excited to see that unfold in the next season, which is just going to, I think up, the, up the ante. Yeah. On all fronts. Yeah. Um, which I, is I fine. Agree. And, and, you know, 
they got to do the time jumps. They did a great job telling all the story. And we really just needed more like family members to kill off later on. So like we couldn't right. just start early in season one because we didn't have enough characters. And now we have like three generations of people to kill off. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, Game of Thrones building it all up to just start taking it all killing away. people yeah um, that that that's the most exciting thing going into to season two here is that we have everybody alive basically except for the one kid that i didn't even remember his name which Portland. which yeah so i yeah that's definitely exciting i'm definitely invested in these characters through and through um i think that all the actors did a freaking fantastic job even at you know to, even with the time jumping and everything this could have got really muddled down and confusing and i think they did a great job keeping it all together now granted i'm just not very good with names that's why i didn't remember that kid's name that's just me <laughs> yeah. personally so it's not that yeah. it's not to them but it doesn't help that his name is luceris they call him luke and then his right. brother is just saris just they call, they call him jace, jace. yeah uh. <laughs> so i i do also want to point out that it does feel like they really workshopped the imagery the background imagery of this show from the first, if you look at the first season or the first half of the season shot yeah. of like Dragonstone and stuff versus the end here, like when Damon has Dragonstone behind him with the dragon, like it looks real. It doesn't look like it's the 3d, you know, yep. soundstage thing or whatever it's called. So yeah, I think they're, they're, you know, learning tricks to make it look a lot better. So I'm, yeah, I'm excited for season two, dude, because I think we got a lot, a lot to look forward to. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to ask you, so about Amond, I'll see who didn't intentionally do that. That was an accident, right? Um, but how do you think his character is going to come out of that situation? Because obviously he, one, has to go tell his mother um, that he was a bad boy <laughs> <laughs> and didn't make things any better. Um, no. Be like, yeah, I know we were trying to, like, get Rhaenyra to, like, agree to terms. I don't think she's going to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I, but, but you know, he, with him so far, like he, he goes, he, he, his character has a lot of growth and it's like, he goes from one stage, something happens, something important and happens. And then he takes that and then shifts direction a little bit. So I'm interested to see which direction he goes. And I was wondering if you had an idea of like, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It, it, like, like part of me thinks that, he's maybe not even going to say anything about it. If you think about it, that dragon fell like into the ocean, right? I don't know how that dude knew to tell Damon. Yeah. Yeah. By the end of oh, the episode, good, I was yeah, like, that's they're... a great point. Yeah. That was the, that was the one thing that I was like, it's, it's the timing issue that we always have with game of Thrones. Like that, how did this happen so quickly? Like this is something mm -hmm. that they theoretically could have not even known happened. Right. Yeah. Like, well, she nobody... said it was a short ride. Which right. it is. Um, yeah. And but that's still fine. really quickly. <laughs> really so quickly. I, I unfortunately, depending on the timing here, I think that her mom, his mom's going to find out some other way. I don't think he's going to tell her. I think she's probably mm. going to know by the time he gets back somehow, some <laughs> mystical way. Uh, you know, they must have like a super fast flying raven or something. But yeah, I don't know. I think that he knows and you can see it on his face. He knows that he screwed up like mm -hmm. big time like a big screw up and uh even grandpa's gonna be pissed i think at that yeah one, maybe yeah i don't think otto's gonna be i don't know otto's otto's weird the way he takes everything's just a plus to him like oh yeah that's true that's true. oh well like that yeah. works uh, i mean one i less. think yeah i think that it really if you boil it down it is kind of a benefit it's one less dragon one less rider now granite is it going to start a war? We already knew the war is coming. Like, you know that it's coming, right? The high towers yeah. have to know it's coming. R they can't assume that Rainier is going to be like, Oh yeah, I'll take your, I'll take your deal. No doubt. Like there's no way they know it's coming. So I, I don't think it's going to be the, the shocking moment that for the high towers, at least I think the shocking right. moment is going to be for Rainier finding out that the high towers are definitely not, her buddy anymore right like allison's full crazy mode right now <laughs> it'll be interesting to see uh aemon like played off like huh oh that's weird i yeah. i saw him leave i yeah i don't know what happened <laughs> i left before him i right. was already on my way back yeah yeah uh, yeah i think that 
The Baratheon must have killed him. I don't know. He's just such a yeah. He's such a such a strong willed character in this second half of the season that I don't think it's going to affect him as much as as we think right. it is. I think he's going to brush it off. And he's he. Let's not forget that he's got that need for violence as well. We see it multiple times. Like he wants fights to break out. He wants things to happen. So unfortunately, the dude that picked on him when he was a kid kind of got ripped in half along with his dragon but you know move on chomped with our lives half, just yeah. chomped just yeah. chomped right through um like a like a little it's a little little bug yeah i mean it was bird. brutal man like the dragon split into multiple pieces i was like geez first off I, I i love the way they frame that because it looks like he's he got away like that you know yeah. he gets out of the storm crystal clear like everything looks kosher and it's not. So I, yeah, I love that. I, was it maybe, did it need to be the final scene of the show? I, I like, I could have used something more besides Rhaenyra's like finding out about it. Like we know she's going to be upset and, and want to go to war over it, but. Yeah. And I think that's probably the hardest thing about this episode and its biggest downfalls. Like there's a lot of stuff in it that just is just like false direction. Yeah. In terms of like, oh, it's pretty clear Jay or Luke's about to die. Like, you know, it looked even the way they set it up, like him just kind of like fluttering in the storm's end. And it, like, it just doesn't look good for him. Like something yeah. bad's going to happen, dude. Um, and then I'll see Vagar right there. It's just like, oh, yeah, this isn't this going to be a classic. Like you're about to get bullied and you're going to die from this bullying. Um, yeah. And. Yeah, it just. It was like, we don't need, and, they, and that kind of like negates the whole, you'll hear my terms by tomorrow. Like she's even remotely concerned the idea of accepting terms. Like we know she's going, even if she accepted terms, they would get broken because there has to be a worry. Right, this, right. You know, yeah. Story to tell. So <laughs> yeah. um, I, can, I, had, I had similar complaints about things that they're doing um, in Rings of Power like that, where there's this obvious um, you have to, I think you have to be careful when it comes to IPs like this, where there's this established like, duh, we know that's going to happen. Unless you're right. really changing like the story. Um, it's just like they're adding in these weird little mini arcs. That's just for like audience shock and awe for those that don't know what's going on. They're like, oh, yeah, maybe she yeah. is going to like just accept that. Right. <laughs> like, right. no, they're not like it's so, like it's weird when that's written in there. It just feels like very wasteful it's just like why yeah. like we know it feels, it's not gonna happen it's yeah it feels forward. very mid-season not yeah. final episode you know what i mean yeah and um i had a thought but i think i lost it oh uh yeah i lost it okay forget it. i'll think about it <laughs> all right um so yeah corliss is back and his wife that was always a good conversation so damon um chokes renera um out of like what seems to be just he he's emotionally just like underdeveloped and he just can he's just so frustrated with her that like everything is like right here in front of like her to, and them really to be yeah. like war let's just do this and he was using like you know we'll surround king's landing and have every high tower's head on a spike you know within yeah. like a couple days yeah. um like he's just, he's just ready to go yeah. And I think he just can't process that well. And he's just so frustrated with her. And I think I'm in on top of like, you know, they technically lost a, a child together. Like there's just like a lot going on between them. Um, and she's also just kind of like instantly turned into our father, which I think is very right. frustrating for him yeah. um, because she kind of like goes through all that. And as soon as that crown goes on her head, she is just like buttoned up like Viserys clone, which yeah. I, she needs to shed a little bit. And I think that's why he does that. Not that it's like justifiable, but like it's also within character of Damon, like Damon, he acts out and like, he can't process things like a normal person should be. Yeah. Able to. Yeah. I mean, I think that, yeah, it's, it, there's multiple parallels in, in this episode back to like the, the baby dying back to Viserys's baby dying, the yep. burning of the dead baby at the pyre. Same as, as before might even been playing the same music. And we also got to remember that, yeah, does Damon maybe have a case like, let's just do this? Sure. But we also have to remember that he's not the military commander that he thinks he is because he was getting his ass kicked in, in the Stepstones until what's his face came up with the plan. So 
he's he's just very quick to pull that trigger and not think of the consequences <laughs> behind it. Like, yeah, could they march in and put all the high towers? Sure, but King's Landing is probably going to burn as a result, right? So, yeah. and I do, even though I'm like so sick of hearing, I don't want to roll over the the ashes and bones or whatever Dana used to say back in, yeah. in season one. I'm like so sick, like it's dragons. Let's just fucking burn some shit. You know what I mean? Like, just take yeah. your throne. Like, I get that you want to be this peaceful king. It didn't work. It did work out for your father, really. But because he was so peaceful and so <laughs> passive, he had this entire side of the family usurp his throne afterwards because he had no idea that all this shit was getting plotted behind his back. So you got to be smarter. Yeah. Here's the parallel to the real world. Um, just Saris, his, his, his dad or grandfather, um, the prior King to him. Yeah. He, he was part of the greatest generation, right? They, they, yeah. made, they made everything like really freaking nice. And then Viserys yeah. comes along and he's very much like, a boomer he's in that like post yep. world war ii era where everything is like awesome houses are like 50 grand less cars were like four grand yeah <laughs> you, you can get anything you want with just like a factory job out of high school right like, everything's just like <laughs> kosher everything's just good yeah right yep. and that's you know kind of letting the world kind of like went went to shit because of Fall that part that yeah um of yeah. it and that's really what's happening here. Like Viserys had the sweet slice of the cake just right in the middle where it's like, Oh, I just have to keep all this niceness going easy enough. Right. 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 Uh, no, <laughs> no, we know that that's not how this world works or our world works. So yeah, I don't know. I don't think that, like I said earlier, I don't think she's going to be her father, especially yeah. at the end of this episode. Like, I think it's, it, it's game on. Like she, her eyes are open. She knows shit's got to hit the fan. Elizabeth Moss us. And she's not going to get the, the message that like, Oh, he was just screwing with it. Not that it would even matter really. Like no. she, he still killed her son, but she's not going to get that message that he was just, he didn't do it on purpose. It was Vagar. Like that's not going to come her way. She's going to get yeah. the message that Vagar and Aemon killed her son on the way out of Storm's End. So it's I, I'll be curious to see if not that she could, but like, is she going to pull the other son? Like, OK, forget it. <laughs> like, don't go to don't go there. Come back here. Right. I don't even know how she would accomplish that goal, really. Yeah. But, I mean, Jace isn't dying. He's good. No, um, he's going to have some like very character building, I think, um, adventures. Yeah, on his little his little stint north, I think it'll be really good for him as a character. Um, but speaking of kind of you're you're kind of like you know the story of how did Luke die, right? Who did it, kind of thing. Um, I like how that they touched on that in this episode with Renice and Viserys and Damon's like or Damon's like, how did he die? She's like, I really can't say. And at first, it's like from the viewer standpoint, it's like. Eh, is she like trying to like instigate stuff here? Like just like leave it open ended for him to be like, oh, he got murdered, like for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, and technically though, she doesn't know. She was locked in her room. It was all under wraps, all hush hush. Like technically, no one except like really the high tower, like the council, the small council, like, right? Where the the master of coin was like charging them all with regicide. Like no one really knows how the king died to the wider yeah. world us the viewers know luckily um if they if they would not have shown us that scene it we would have the same question too like i don't know like allison yeah like, po like poisoned him um someone murdered him so yeah. so it's interesting that like that's something i think that will come back up in terms of like so how did the king die like does right. anyone really want to tell us are we yeah. gonna ever bury burn his body like what's going on here um, yeah yeah just skipped over that shit didn't we <laughs> just yeah crown egg on let's move on with our lives yeah i think that especially rainy's walking out of of the red keep <laughs> when she was leaving like the fucking place is a house of horrors bro like there's people hanging yeah. in the hall there's like it's a very dark monastery setting like you said so i, I I got, I understand that she's got questions and, and, and I get that Damon does too, but they were just there with him. Like he's on death's doorstop. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he's yeah. got his hand on the door handle when they leave. So 
I get that 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 in in their planning and in their motivation, it's probably better to think that they killed the king. But even though she thinks that, no, I don't think she. Yeah, I don't think, I, I don't think Damon really does either, right? No, he just wants to. He just wants to believe it, even though like, like he literally had to help carry him up the steps to the Iron Throne. So he's he knows that he was right there at Death's door. Mm -hmm. So. And he even called out Renice for not like burning like them all when she had the chance. He's just kind of yeah. like putting it all together. And he's like, "Why didn't? Why are you here? Like, how did you escape? And like, one, why aren't they all dead?" Um, she's like, "She made a good point. It's not her war to start, but she'll definitely help out in it." Um, yeah, she does. So, yeah, she does make a very good point there. And I think that uh, that was kind of the question that we had last week. Like, why not just? burn them all you know what i mean that's yeah. it would have been real quick but it's the same thing like we know that's not going to happen but she does have a good point like it's it's not her war to start right she doesn't want to be the the instigator of everything but that yeah, kind of it... wasn't starting a war that was ending any <laughs> chance of a war right <laughs> yeah but in the same thing like still like how did uh you know how did the king die technically it would be like so like to the common person like so wait a second, we just crowned a new king. Yeah, that was super shifty how we got there, but point is we were crowning a new king. And yeah. then <laughs> and then some random Targaryen cousin just like murders like the entire right. yeah. royal all the whole the whole royal family. That doesn't seem right. That seems like a bad thing. So no, I mean, yeah, it could have ended started and ended it right there. I mean, I guess I guess then she would fly to uh to Rhaenyra yeah. Dragonstone and have been like, hey, you know fixed it it's okay that was about to go really south we're about to have like three more seasons but we're just gonna cap it here at one i, I fixed it yeah okay um, i got i have a question for you and that is who on either side do you think has the best chance of betraying their said side um, hmm also, I was going to say earlier, I was uh, Damon also probably choked her because he was like, we could have killed Otto like right yeah. there and we did it <laughs> yeah. earlier. I'm so right. mad. I'm so right. mad. He just wants um, to kill Otto. I hope he gets the chance to, to be honest with you. He deserves. Dude, yeah, he was just he babbling nonsense, one. like yeah. nonsensical cool things. Just like, let's <laughs> just go. Like, let's just kill him. Um, yep. But uh, who might flip? Um, I still think Amond has a really good, really good case. But yeah. like, his case definitely was not helped this episode where he like kills um, Luke. He's kind of like really out in the doghouse on that one. Right. Um, though I still like to think um, him and Damon have something more going on between their characters than just like parallels in attitude and like a straight up like standoff, like the hound versus the mountain yeah. fight we're like looking for. Like, I hope there's more to their characters than just like some epic fight scene um, where like one of them kills each other. I would like to think that there's some more purpose there in their in their sameness to where, yeah. like you said, I think a couple of episodes ago where Damon kind of like convinces him like, hey, man, maybe come help us or vice versa. Um, I, I mean, obviously, Damon's never going to help the Greens. Right. But I think it's I think Eamon has a pretty good chance on his side to at least not be the most helpful, like definitely be caught in like the middle ground gray territory. Um, Cause he could still fight with his brother. Um, there could be a lot that goes on there um, yeah. on the, on the black side. I don't know. They got it. They got it pretty tight though. Um, I wouldn't put put it past the Valerians, even though they're super on board right now. I still wouldn't put it really far past them to shift to like a neutral stance at the least. Yeah, yeah, I uh, yeah, I would definitely agree with you uh, on Corliss and Rhaenys, especially because they have a lot of baggage with Rhaenyra. Obviously, they think Rhaenyra and Damon murdered their son. Mm -hmm. That's a that that's obviously a big deal. They seem like the obvious choice to maybe flip at some point on that side especially because rainy seems to be 
fully on board because Rhaenyra is holding the realm together. That's not going to happen forever, right? We know that the, the, this is going to plunge into war eventually. So, and I, I think we're there. But uh, on the on the high tower side, I don't know. I, I, I can't really place it. I want to think, do you think that Alicent and Rhaenyra are ever going to have like a, we were best friends at one point. Maybe we should stop this shit altogether. Or is Allison full on board? Because she doesn't seem full on board. A lot of the stuff that happened was, you know, planned without her knowledge, mm-hmm. which she's going to feel slighted by, I would imagine. And she's still, yeah, she's still definitely playing catch up, which was the big press to k- get Aegon first because she wants to be in his ear first. Right. Um, so I could, I, I could see, um, I would want to, that's another, uh, character do i would like to see more come from than just like pure like okay we're we're basically identical in every single way except for the fact that we're so identical we hate each other for that those exact same reasons i would like to see them have more of a like understanding and i would yeah i I would say even both of them like kind of tell like everyone else to like stop or like fuck off like something yeah to where yeah. like they are a, 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 on some topic a unified front maybe not the whole war maybe not like literally who's king but like something that's very dire and very big plot point and they're just like all right we're gonna agree on this one thing and we're gonna try to work together to get through yeah it. um yeah what that is i don't know but i would definitely like to see definitely more depth and they alluded to that too from her trying to beat out her father her telling her father off her making sure she has control of Amond or Aegon. So her father could eventually get under the skin in his claws into Aegon. And that's where she starts to lose him. And she gets really frustrated with the entire, like her father situation. Yeah. Maybe she kills it, her father in, in yeah. typical Lannister, Lannister fashion. Yeah. I mean, I think that I, I think Allison is at least for me currently kind of on the fence because she, Hey, let's be honest. Okay. She's not, like we said, her father and everybody plotted behind her. She's got some mm-hmm. weird dude waiting in a room to look at her feet every night when she gets home. Like she's not happy there. We see that. And I got to yeah. think that there's more to telling them their story when they were teenagers than just uh, they were friends and now they hate each other. You know what I mean? Right. I, I hope there's more right. depth there as far as the characters go. So I don't know. Allison just seems like, I don't know. She seems like she could be the one that, that, does something to yeah betray the family in some way yeah yeah and it it, it would be interesting to see because Otto isn't done like Otto's gonna keep being like super douchey Otto and yeah I think Eamon is very much his mother like I think he's a mama's boy like they all kind of are they all like really like their mom um she's queen why not right but um It'd be interesting. He, you know, if, is he like the ride or die son for his mother? And that also might help him flip a little bit in terms of the grayness on like where he stands with her um, and or them versus like Aegon and Otto. Um, so like, and like you said, they're not very well put together family. Like they're kind of breaking no. up the seams as it is. So yeah. I don't see, I don't see her progress with Aegon lasting long in terms of like, be a good King. Um, yeah. Be nice. Be kind. Be my beautiful little boy. I know you are. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. And that's, uh, I have this dagger and I want to use it. <laughs> yeah. That's my other question is like, where, where do you think Aegon's going to go as far as what kind of king is Aegon going to be here? Dude, he's a black box. I think, I think he's going to hold it together with his mother's guidance and, he's going to slowly go off the rails and she's going to lose control of him. And Otto's going to be able to like try to control him. So I think that's going to be a big thing between Otto and Alicent is how do we control the King? Who's right. otherwise like a pretty worthless pile of shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. On all and fronts. Had, and he just yeah. happens to be King now. And he kind of seems like he enjoys it and he was starting to kind of feel it, but like that's not going to hold up. No, it's like not. He's a rest, right? Yeah, that he's high. He's gonna have like child last. fight. Oh, that's funny. So like Otto's supposed to be like getting rid of the child fighting pits, and Aegon's gonna be like, "No, nah, we're gonna make this like yeah. 
national like sport like this is our right. official sport of the kingdom yeah uh, 10 year old <laughs> fighting pits and everyone's like no right yeah i think the you know he's got and i mentioned it in earlier episodes he's got one of two ways to go i think i don't think there's a chance in hell he becomes a good king zero zero chance that he's going to be like the the zero. good king of of this story but he's got to either and I, I i know it's not game of thrones but i gotta try and compare it to to frame my story a little bit so he's either going to go joffrey's route which i think is what most people probably assume is going to happen in the long run or robert's route or he's just a drunk that just doesn't really care and i think that would be more interesting for the story if he was just like the king, like everybody else is fighting, he's just drunk, doesn't really give a shit what's going on. Like that makes more sense because it's going to be easier for the Targaryens to get people on their side if he is like a mad king, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I definitely would like to see more of a Baratheon route. Um, yeah. But maybe like a Baratheon blended with um, a Tommen where it's like the drunk just doesn't care, but then like he's pressured in the situations and he's like i don't know what to do i'm just gonna pick something someone tell me what to do and he's just gonna like do whatever Otto says for example yeah um yeah or whatever birds chirp in his ear like maybe like laris is like creeping in his ear and it's just like yeah just burn it all man yeah <laughs> you've got yeah. dragons i wish i had a dragon to burn yeah everything with. <laughs> i'd burn yeah. my family over all over again right um so yeah goes I think that uh, I think he's he's definitely got the opportunity to be the puppet that people are trying to pass back and forth to to yeah. do their bidding. I think that's what they're setting up. But uh, I'm here to see what, what happens with Laris. Is that they do mention Harrenhal taking Harrenhal in this episode, which he is now the member of. So yep. yeah, just a lot of military cool military shit that could come out of this. Uh, what we set up here, so. Years from now, I guess we'll find out which route yeah. to go. Yeah, two years from now, we can hope. Um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, <laughs> I think just this episode just has the rest of the season kind of riding behind it is really what carries it. Otherwise, like it, it's kind of like definitely in the bottom half, maybe. Well, it's in the bottom second half of the of the show um it wasn't you know it wasn't fantastic or great like it just really yeah. satisfied the marks for a finale and then we're kind of like getting out of here so um not that it was a miss it was just you know not not the high point of the show i think yeah i agree penultimate was high point um and yeah i i i like the idea of what they did here. I think it was a cool idea, but like I said, I think that it should not have been penultimate and finale. I think it should have been maybe even seven and eight or eight and nine. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, I feel like they need to frame both sides here moving into season two, like where everybody's at, you know, what the plans are, who's on each side. I get that they needed to do that. It just didn't, I needed some, I needed some sort of war to pop off in this finale and we really got just a really cool dragon sequence which i loved don't get me wrong but i needed i needed just a little bit more action but it, it's it's kind of a mute point at this point because i'm sure yeah. we're gonna get that i'm sure we're gonna get an abundance of action in the show but yeah that's just my opinion like just i don't want to say it fizzled out at the end it just didn't really you yeah know, the firework went up and then didn't didn't explode maybe yeah it was just like the little the little <laughs> little puff ones um little sparkler ones that go up um so yeah it's it's exactly what it needed to be but i think they'll build up to that like you said earlier like it's the first season they'll get they'll get over it and they'll get really kind of cooking um with most ridiculous action we can we can hope for so um but yeah and that's just like the other drawback is just like not like a crazy ton happens in this episode. Like a ton happened in the last episode because a lot yeah. was going on. Yeah. This one, you know, we, we do get a lot of cool references to like houses, who's where, who's, you know, called for who. Um, but there's even that I feel like isn't completely shored up. Um, 
because that that's basically gonna be the first like episode or two of the next season really yeah. it's kind of like resolving like where everyone even stands to start the war right. so yeah i agree with you like they could have brought this season more to have a head and like war was just like upon them and, yeah like, even if it was like even if it was a blockade scene at the end of them like blockading something or some ships sailing like the the end of whatever season seven or six when Danny was yeah taken off so, just something to give me a little bit of the Game of Thrones action I'm looking for. Yeah, and while I'm not like I don't pro- I don't want to promote like them doing like big ridiculous cliffhangers, um, but like it's almost like yeah, ridiculous, yeah, it's like you, setups yeah. is what they need to do. Like they could have done like a ridiculous setup where it's like even just ended it with like two navies sailing at each other with like dragons on both sides and then just yeah. went to black and just like made just left the biggest teaser um on the ground. Instead it was all just like more right, palace and tree right. kind and of that's, teaser. That's no way- no big grand set piece teaser. Right. Right. Yeah. There I mean, outside of the stepstones, we didn't really have a, a big set. I mean, I guess the dragon sequence in this was maybe a, a set yeah. piece for, for the the show. But yeah, I, I hate absolutely hate cliffhangers in, in shows like this. Like I mean, I'll talk about the Jon Snow one like that sucked waiting a year and a half to figure out what happened there. Same with when I watched The Walking Dead, like when Negan came and you didn't know who he killed. Like, that's just a shitty way to end a a season. You know what I mean? That's just a crappy way to do it. So I, I don't like that either. I don't think that that's what I wanted. And we we're on a little bit of a cliffhanger here, I guess, because we yeah. don't know how everybody's going to take the news of, of what happened here. But it's not it wasn't uh, offensive like some of the. Other yeah, and that's were, it. I guess right? that's the other key word that it, it's news, right? It's just more of intrigue, like, ooh, guess who just got killed accidentally or guess who's died. Right. It's just more of the intrigue. And it's less of like something like a dramatic event happening. Um so it's just more passing of like information around, which yeah. we've gotten plenty of, and it's been really good this season. But yeah, it you know, could it be better? Definitely. Was it horrible? Definitely not. Um, so no, it'll be all stuff that gets corrected definitely in the season two, uh, especially if we're getting four seasons. That'll be a nice like I think compact story to tell. Yeah. Um. What will be, what do you think will be like the first big action set piece we get in season two? Yeah, I, I, sea I have battle, to assume it's going to be something. Yeah, I, I have to assume it's going to be something sea based because they're talking about the blockade. They're also talking about Rainey's going and patrolling something with the dragon. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's definitely going to be sea based. I think that's the most important thing right now is everybody's trying to, uh, tie down their allegiances is is maybe funneling in some blockades and and getting things prepped so i i don't expect there to be fireworks popping off in the first couple episodes of the next season at all i think they're gonna be and and i'm cool with that like yeah like the palace intrigue from game of thrones was some of the coolest shit and now we're getting a show basically based around that Mm -hmm. so so give me all of that you want don't get me wrong. I'm not bitching. I'm just saying maybe maybe one more battle towards the second one half of the season. Here. Just one more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, this season went through its its arcs, too. And like there's a lot more Damon action focus there at the beginning. Right. Just like warrior stuff. Um, and that really kind of did pan out as we shifted more to like family and the multiple generations and, you know. There, there was another meme somewhere where it was like, oh, a show about dragons and, you know, knights yeah. and warriors. And the most badass thing that's happened is like a dead man, like really wanting to sit on the throne really badly. Yeah. Like that was <laughs> such an awesome. Uh, yeah, I heard I awesome heard that. Piece. Yeah, I heard that. And then I heard the the most badass thing is the tournament, which I, it that frames the that frames the world at the beginning of the show, like it's peacetime. Yeah. Like they're having tournaments to get, to get their, their parties, blood man. flowing. Yeah. It's, it's party time. Birthdays, so I, inauguration, yeah. whatever right. you got. Right. Yeah. I think that's, that's primarily all going to be dead. Uh, but by the time season two comes around, like we're, we're not going to get any more tournaments, even though it is weird because I know I mentioned this before, but the blacks and the greens, we, we said 
happened from them wearing colored dresses to some tournament. And we, I don't think that we saw that tournament unless it's that first tournament, but I'm pretty sure Rhaenyra does not have a black dress on at that tournament. She has a red yeah, dress. Yeah, it's red. Yeah. So I don't know if that was just something that was changed for the, from the books or if that tournament is coming. I can't imagine that anybody's going to be holding tournaments in the, the brink of war, but I could be wrong. Maybe that's how that's gonna be that's gonna be Rainier's proposition. Like, hey, we're gonna have a tournament and settle yeah. this. Um Yep, maybe. Maybe. You know, or or like, you know, one on one combat, trial by combat kind of yeah. situation. I call Damon. I, I call Eamon. <laughs> to be honest with you, I thought that's how this was gonna end with uh Eamon and uh whatever his name is. What's his name? Chase, Jace, whatever. Chase. Uh, I thought that was gonna be a trial by combat in uh, Storm's end there. I was like, yeah. that's it's gonna be real shitty to watch another kid get his ass kicked in the show, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, and maybe, um, I'm trying to think, trial by comp, maybe there'll be maybe they'll have a like a dragon pit fight. Like, I think that needs to happen eventually, so yeah, yeah, there, there's a lot of like different elements like that that are lingering out there. It's like maybe we're gonna get like another like half a season or maybe all of season two with like no war. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. Like I said, I don't know. I don't know the framing in the book. I don't even know where we're at, like in the book, right? I don't yeah. know if we're years away from the war or if we're right here at the at the uh, start of it. So, yeah, I'm yeah. excited, man. I, like yeah. I'm, like I said, I'm super highly anticipating already season two because <laughs> I need more. Yeah, it'd just be interesting for um, Rhaenyra to like. Just or there just be two claims to the throne for like more than a like year right before war started like it, but I could see that happening where it's just like a lot of just very tedious like Cold War standoff. Yeah. It's kind of like Cold War ish because everyone's got like nukes. Like one it team is, has right. four nukes, the other one has like fifteen yeah. nukes that they're like trying to fix up and make sh- more nukes. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a good way to good way to say it for sure. Yeah, so it definitely could be like that. I I unfortunately, like I said, I earlier on in the companion series, I unfortunately had the ending of this spoiled, or at least one of the characters' major deaths spoiled from the original show, hmm. uh, where it's talked about. But even the phrase that is said in the original show, I'm still trying to wrap my head around. Like who, who does that? <laughs> <laughs> I get, wait, wait a second. I don't think that character exists, but I think I, I get what they're saying. But so, yeah, I, I'm kind of bummed about that, but. Yeah. I we'll mean, see. clearly we'll the see. high towers don't last on too much longer after this whole spat yeah. anyways, because they're not in Game of Thrones. Yeah. I mean, I think that I, I, I think they're alive in Game of Thrones. I just don't think yeah. they're one of the big players. There's there's an old town. They they tuck their tail between their legs and yeah. they go back to old town and they're like, yeah. we're just gonna stay here. Right. Um, it's right. dangerous out there. We lost yeah. our whole family. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. and 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 what well, you were talking about, like Otto's a second son. Like technically the high towers just are standing behind like their second son who's making a lot of good plays in the capital. But like right. I think as soon as that is gone, like they're just gonna be like, Oh yeah, f- screw this. Like Yep. We'll train some maesters. Um, We're good. Yeah. <laughs> so right. it's really all, it's all Otto's doing the whole reason they're even a thing in the first yeah, place. It's true. Um, yeah. 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 Cool. Well, the sad, sad end to the companion series. Guess we'll have to do it for season two in two years. Yeah, for um, sure. Cover all, all of its greatness. But yeah, very good season. I, I can't really want, I don't want to say it's definitely the, um, this and Andor is for for sure like my favorite things I'm watching I right hope now. So. Um, I hope so because that that show, like I said, just kind of fucking put me to sleep. Those first two episodes, bro. I know it gets hey, better. I've, I'm hearing all about it, but yeah, that's a, it's that a slow point. burn. But like, it, it's kind of like it's galactic intrigue is what it becomes, right? Because right. it's, it's all kind of like the same stuff here, like spies and like they did this, they did that all underhanded backstabbing is it's yeah that's cool it builds up sure. to it yeah. um so and i think for those two reasons too because and they're just like really top notch in terms of production quality so yeah 
definitely, definitely has been a good, um, just good to have this show back. We said on the first episode, good, good to have like that 9 p.m. premiere Game of Thrones music. Like, you just cannot go wrong there. Yeah, um, I agree. And I wonder if they'll, they'll change the intro at all. Um, no, I don't think they will. Just I keep, mean, I think keep the blood flowing and the, the dying, dying symbols. I think that that's so cool. They continue that. Yeah, I think that's that's a super cool way to do it. It's changed quite a bit just in the yeah. this first season. But as far as the intro song, like they're not going to outdo that intro song. They might as well just keep it. Like it's just so good. Even now, dude, it's just that that end of that song is just so cool. So it, it's the Star Wars credit c- crawl. Like yeah, the music, yeah. Like it's all you really it, need. Um, yeah, I agree. Yep. Nothing more needs to be said. It's just that it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's co- it's cool, and I, I I like the imagery too. The the because this is all about bl- bloodlines and succession yeah. and stuff, so it's really cool the the way they did it. I do feel. Do you feel like it's shorter though than the original Game of Thrones intro? No. I feel like it might be. Really, I feel like part time of the it. song is cut out, but maybe yeah, I might have hmm. to time it. Um, I would say the only parts they maybe cut out is maybe it's an audio thing, and it's not actually part of the song is. In the in Game of Thrones, like as the pl- as the places were being built, like on the map, there was like construction, like b- like banging sounds, if Noises. you will, and, yeah, yeah, like yeah. like base, extra base in there as like bridges yeah. folded and castles and towers rose. So maybe there's maybe there's some extra audio there that maybe you're missing. Yeah, I'm your missing head that from, might be it. Yeah, because they wouldn't have that in right. the flowing blood sequence. Right. Um, yeah, that's true. Because I always remember when um, the Iron Islands went up, like you could hear like as yeah. the bridges snapped into place between them, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. So yeah, that might be it. Yeah, cool. Well, we'll call it here. Um, awesome show. Yeah, awesome show. I agree. Great cast of characters, and glad it worked out. Glad. It yeah, worked me out. too, it man. A, a complete, it had a chance. Complete stinker. Yeah, it had and a that's chance, why. Every- <clears throat> Season eight, no one had high hopes, right? Everyone went into this very cautiously and like, mm, right. let's see what's going on. And then they were like, oh, no, this looks, this checks out. This is legit so far. Um, yeah. And it's pretty legit. So, And they did, uh, you know, they said, the showrunner said that season two is going to feel more like the middle part of Game of Thrones. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, that's, the, that's uh, arguably that's some of the best. That's the best spot to pick. So. Yeah. Like, oh, you're, you're telling me season season three and four for yeah. season, there's gonna equally like two for two, right? Two so for two, three yeah. Four, <laughs> yep. Then we're gonna get a, a five and a six. Yeah. And then a seven and an eight. That doesn't sound fun. That but... doesn't sound fun. <laughs> Hopefully they, they yeah, they workshop that one a little bit better. <laughs> I think I think them knowing they have a definitive start and end is a big advantage this time around. For sure. Yeah, they still don't even have their end. Uh, they had to yeah. make that up for yeah. Game of Thrones, not even so. close to it, actually. So, by the yeah, sounds so. of it, yeah, it's crazy how well you can write write uh, uh, a television adaptation of a story that's finished, right? Versus right. one that's unfinished. Right, it goes such a long way. Um, yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> cool. Well, thank you all for tuning in. This has been um, the House of the Dragon campaign series. We. We're happy to do this. We enjoyed it a lot. Um, just like talking about this show. I like having a reason to watch it twice. Um, right. Every week and just, just crush through it with that. Um, tune in this Thursday for our last Spooktober episode. We will be talking about um, the latest Flana Flanniverse, as I think Flanniverse, it's been coined. There you go. <laughs> uh, Mike Flanagan's latest Netflix series. Um, that is horror based, but I would, I think this one's being more categorized as a thriller and it's called the Midnight club um, for various reasons. So we will be talking about that and maybe some other stuff, um, but we'll wrap Spooktober with both this episode, very orange and pumpkin-y with the table and the candles and the very haunting end sequence and (laughs) our final actual Spooktober episode this Thursday. So tune in then. Perfect. And as far as this series goes, we'll see you in, Two years. Two years at minimum. Two point five years. Please surprise me. Please surprise me. <laughs> Six months. Boom. <laughs>